Hello, this is Doris and welcome to the video where I'm going to refine the sketch that I decided to go with um, in the previous video. So you can see again, this is a screen record. I'm on my iPad. I have the guidelines on to uh, on the, um, the canvas where I'm going to start sketching and the pencil sketch has been imported. I've reduced the opacity of, of it a little bit so I can see better where I'm penciling over it. I've put the oval shape around it just to give me an indication of where I want the letters to fall into and you can see here that I'm putting every letter on a different layer because that is going to give me a little more uh, options and freedoms and fle flexibility to move the letters around if I have to. And every once in a while I'm going to, to turn off and toggle visibility with the, with the guidelines and the background just to make sure you know that I see what I'm actually writing and what it looks like without it on top. And if you're new to lettering, um, or put it that way, when I was new to lettering and I was seeing people post their stuff on Instagram, I was looking at these beautiful pieces and I was thinking, wow, that's amazing, they can write like that. Um, now with a lot more practice, I understand that if you can see here, this little F, I fidgeted with it about 27 times. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say no letter that you see written by a professional letterer or calligraphy artist is the first version. Um, unless you're, you know, really very, very good and that's amazing and I, I'm, you know, jealous and I want to get there sometime. But um, yeah, so there's a lot, a lot, a lot of refining going on. And so this is where I'm kind of happy with the way the first round goes, which is where I take my pink pen and go, okay, what's working, what's not working? And so with any lettering piece, with any quote that is a little larger with any phrase, especially if they're fine if they're sitting in a cartouche like you know the letters fill a kind of shape i want to make sure that the flourishes are okay and that there is symmetry and that everything looks very even and intentional so i've identified with my red pen a couple of holes i've identified the shape of the oval to make sure that i want to mirror so that there is symmetry and um you can see there right now I'm trying to fill the the top right hand corner with that S. How can I make it so that it doesn't look too overworked but yet the space is filled and it doesn't look empty. And um, going over the the second word there, same kind of thing. I'm already adding in some contrast to, to see um, what it will look like with some contrast. And yeah, just a lot of shading, a lot of going over it, a lot of fidgeting with uh, different layers and thinking about what I want the, the final piece to look like. At this point, um, the sketches were pretty loose at this point. I'm no longer using the guidelines as a backdrop, as you might notice, because I, I need the flexibility to be able to make some letters maybe a little bigger or a little smaller to fit the space, because right now what I'm looking for is um, a pleasing layout and finding a way that the letters don't... Um, compete with one another that the there we go that so that L loop is looking very large I want to look at where the holes are I'm gonna hold the the piece right in front of my eyes and then um, at arm's length as well just to get an overview and a, an idea for where the weights are where a lot of ink is going to be put down where a lot of black spaces are where a lot of white spaces are so you see there that capital A at the top, there is the three, four lines next to one another that are all light. So one of those lines is going to need some weight. I'm not deciding which one yet. I'm going to do that in the second round. That E in the middle of interesting is standing by itself because I need the R to dop, dip down a little bit to fill that hole above the variation. Uh, but I want to find a way to connect the E to the S so that it's not just sitting there by itself. There's a huge hole under 
um, that variation under the R there so I need to find a way to fill that and that's when I go into the next round of just refining and playing a little more and seeing what feels right. And there's that little F again, which if you remember from the last video, I spent so much time with that already, but there you go, that's what happened. That E is no longer lonely, it is now connected to the S, I like it. And the other thing that I, that I've uh, looked at in these, um, in the revisions and in my crit critiques of the own, of my own piece, looking at, you know, form, size, weight, is that the, the swirly bits are open ovals. I like them to be open ovals. So I avoided lines crossing one another. And now the variation, that's the only way I found to close that hole down there. So that R is actually the only loop that is um, turning back on itself. Well, it kind of mirrors the, the A loop at the top, so I guess I have a couple of lines crossing one another. But yeah, those are the kinds of considerations that I take um, when, when making a new piece and when trying to figure out how to make it fit. And so I think this is pretty close to the piece that we're ending up with. I've uh, changed the size of that S there a little bit. And now there's the cartouche more or less ready. Thanks for watching.